Welcome back to the Charismatic Voice. Today is our patron's choice day, and they have chosen Alice in Chains, Man in the Box. So I'm very excited to have Alice in Chains finally on the channel. So many of you have been asking for this, and I feel like our patrons just have really good taste. But I have heard Alice in Chains once before. It was black gives way to blue, and I thought it was very pretty. However, I am told that the lead singer on this is different. I believe Black Gives Way to Blue was in 2009, and this song um, is going to be with Lane Staley as the front singer. He passed away in 2002, so I believe that it probably was Jerry Cantrell that I've heard before. And I've heard that their harmonies are particularly fantastic, and I'm excited to hear them in this song. It has been a ton of fun and just a ton of pleasure to get to explore the 90s grunge movement in Seattle with all of you. So I just want to shout out a huge thank you for your recommendations. I think this is going to be fantastic and sort of complete some of my understanding of what this whole grunge thing was. Let's get to it. Very dissonant. I have to tell you, that first vocal sound is not something I would describe as pretty. Very, very different from Black Gives Way to Blue. <laughs> So it feels like it's very nasal, tons of soft palate down, but I feel like it was intended to be that way because it sounds like they're singing an a ah vowel or owl, which is, is very purposefully put into the nose. So let's, uh, let's go back just a little bit. Might as well start it again already. Very interesting chord. They're super dissonant. I think this must be Lane Staley that started singing here. And I want to go back and listen to him just a little bit more. Um, it It's so interesting. After that first really in-your-face vocal sound, uh, it was fascinating that when I heard him start to sing, it sounded like a much more round and mellow sound in the lower. And then he seemed to tilt forward again a little bit later. Um, there's a... There's a lot of quality in this sound. It has um, a certain characteristic to it. I wonder if one of the things that maybe defines a grunge vocal is having that more forward placement at times, because it does sound like it allows um, for a little more nasality in the sound, not to the point of some country, but just um, some nasality. And at the same time, I hear... Um, a little bit of loft too. It's got like some darkness in the timbre at the same time. It's very interesting. Let's go back a little, right there. Oh, that's a, that's a lamb sound. It's very Marilyn Horn. That almost sounded like David Freeman, I swear. Nice, nice distortion there as well. I really like 
the harmonies. They held the mostly straight toned. The voices went together really well. Um, they had uh, an interesting, uh, almost static way of um, going down. There wasn't a lot of movement. It was like these notes together, these ones together, these ones. Uh, it worked. It was nice harmonization. Okay. Yeah, it does have a very in-your-face kind of feeling about it. Uh, I like Lane Staley's line. He has really good vocal line. He's, uh, it's like just continuous energy pouring out. And it feels to me like it's connected to a lower uh, place. Doesn't feel like it's something that is all very high in production. It feels like something that's more rooted in production. And I liked having these, um, I like that we have a different voice singing that backing vocal. It gives us a little bit more depth as well. I'm gonna come back just a little bit. And I also like the way he's coming in and out with that distortion. Uh, I'm very curious how much he adds. It definitely sounds to me though, like that distortion is being produced in a healthy way. I hear a clean tone underneath. There would be the true vocal folds and then another sort of constriction at another place within the larynx is gonna be providing that distortion. And I hear it um, enter and exit as if it's like a little sprinkle on top of the sound, if you will. I don't know if you've ever heard distortion referred to as sprinkles on top of a sound. Maybe that's too sweet for it, but that's essentially how the recipe would work together. really good at sustaining it. I, it's very interesting how he is taking these last few lines and he's got this very long, again, sustained note. He's great at keeping that energy coming at you the whole time. Um, I'm, I'm beginning to think that this might actually be one of the biggest strengths of his voice is the way that he just can hold on to his sound and keep it going and going and going. Um, you need to be an energizer bunny, so to say, if you're going to have a fantastic technique. So I like the way he has that ability to sustain and then he shut it off so quickly on beat and on spit. Both of those were very quick cutoffs. We even heard the delay in the production, which is kind of cool. Let's go back and hear that again. Oh, well, that's it right there. You know, the non, those, that like, more forward rare kind of sound uh, is closer in timbre actually to an electric guitar in some ways, which is interesting.
those are also very interesting harmonies, partly because I mentioned before that they're stagnant, and it's because they're all outlining the same chord. Let's see. So it's all about outlining essentially an F sharp major chord and just inverting it, meaning um, they have the same bass uh, consonants, if you will, and it doesn't really shift as they're moving notes there. Let's go back once more. Uh, here. A little more. I love this top line uh, that, that Lane Staley is singing here. It's so, it's perfect example of bringing in a little bit of distortion, taking it back and then bringing more in and taking it back. He's even playing with a yeah, yeah, yeah. You can really hear that he has a mechanism back there that he's able to fiddle with. It's not straining to the voice. It's, uh, it's an additional layer. Nice. Okay, well, back here. <laughs> This section, I wonder if he was inspired by Dio, but he could be inspired by other artists too. Uh, he's doing that thing where he plays with a vowel, but then he like messes around with it essentially. So instead of uh, he, it's he, yay, 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 right? And he's like opening his mouth and going around it. This is just one pure vowel, okay? He, it's an E vowel. It's not even a diphthong. It's not two vowels put together. It is one vowel. But the way that he's holding it out and then moving his mouth around, it's really playful and it livens up the sound a bunch. Definitely, definitely a very strong definitive choice. And he does it every time in this chorus. So J J J J J S. So that's just Jesus, but instead it's J J J J J S. Now, that one is slightly different, should be noted. So, feed my eyes. He doesn't have as much additional mouth opening and closing that's causing the vowel to change. It's actually a uh, production that's changing. So, he's almost like causing a little bleat by re attacking the note at the source level. Um, the filter, I sometimes refer to this as source and filter essentially. So, the source of your sound is the larynx, and then there are all of these things that you can put the sound through that change the timbre of it. The pitch always happens here though, and then anywhere up above, that's essentially how you want that pitch's color to come across as. You know, it might be red, but maybe it's scarlet, or maybe it's bright red, or you know, there's lots of different shades of color that you add with that filter. So just think of it as Instagram, seriously. Uh, so in this case, on feet, he does a re-attack at the laryngeal level, uh, which is a bit different than the way he's been shaping the vowel and the others. Let's go back. He shapes a little, but not as much. Uh, I'm interested in how active this guitar solo was 
a lot of times we've had these longer lines coming um, from both Staley and Can Cantrell. Cantrell? I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce his name. Um, but we have these longer lines coming from them and the guitar is much more active, which provides a, a nice contrast at this point. Okay, back just a little. <laughs> emotion here is very powerful. It sounds very distraught. Um, that's interesting. Uh, this song has so many religious undertones, or maybe it's not even undertones, it's obvious tones, I guess. Um, obvious, uh, there's such an interesting sub-message here. I feel like it could go 10 billion different ways. I would love to hear what all of you think. Definitely comment in YouTube comments about this. I'm a man in the box, which is really interesting to me, buried in pit. Uh, won't you come and save me, save me? So we just very clearly have some message here about Christianity, but also um, feed my eyes. Can you sew them shut? It seems like there's also a backlash against Christianity. So uh, it's interesting to me that there seems like there's such an inner struggle in this emotional moment. You hear it driven. It is um, definitely very passionate. And I get that a lot um, from a powerful vocal production underneath. It feels loud, feels very connected to the body, very much um, like almost like a, a healthy made scream. But you have that guttural on top of it as well that's creating the distortion, which I think maybe because we have multiple points in of constriction, um, which are creating these sounds together, it feels a little more visceral in nature. Let's go back just a little bit. Yeah, it's And their hair is wonderful. Just like swing it around like that? I don't know. Ooh. Ooh, that's creepy. Ooh. I mean, it makes sense. It keeps saying, can you sew them shut the eyes? Oh, but. Uh, uh. I'm trying to draw a bigger picture now of what grunge is represented by vocally, especially. I feel like there is a lot of color in the voices that I've heard from grunge. A lot of color, it has some um, some distortion on top, it has some grit in there, a little bit of, of growls as well. Uh, definitely um, an acceptance of not always having a lot of frontal mouth opening. On the high notes, I hear a lot more opening, but in the more middle notes, it sounds like a lot of the color is made sort of in that like central oral cavity which also allows for some nasality to enter the sound at times, or a lot of nasality at times. Uh, very interesting to me that you know, there's this like whole almost vocal school that seems to have developed here that has these uh, similarities in these vocalists, which is just super fascinating. Also good grooves for sure. And uh, wide vocal range. 
The thing that I feel sticks out in particular about Alice in Chains that I was liking and would like to hear more of are the harmonies. I'd, I'd love to hear more of these two guys together. They really, they have a nice blend. I thought that the harmony writing was interesting. Um, the echoing of the voice was also interesting. And I'd like to hear uh, a more developed version of that. I'd like to hear where that has gone. So if you have some good suggestions for that, please put them in the comments down below. We'll look for those. And I wanna say a huge thank you to all of our patrons for voting on this. Um, I've been wanting to do Alice in Chains for a long time. So thank you very, very much for this recommendation. Uh, and it was just fun. Thank you. If you guys want to join our Patreon, it is a really fun place to be. I love our community and you can find us there. It's just underneath the Charismatic Voice. You can also find me at thecharismaticvoice.com for information about courses or about singing in general. And if you want to come and say hello sometime, just, you know, to be like, yo, how's it going? I'm here every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday at 8 a.m. Arizona time. That's when we have video premieres and we have a live chat set up during that time. So you can come and say hello. Finally, if you really like the channel, I'm hoping you might really like our merch. We worked so hard on it and we have nice quality in the merch as well and some really fun designs. I hope you'll check that out. That's gonna be in the banner down below this video. Hope to see you somewhere else soon. Thanks.